I generally get restless when an API takes more than 5 seconds to respond. The same happens when I load a website and it takes longer. Imagine your consumer or you are consuming an API which takes longer and you want to stop your processing so that your API doesn't breach your SLA limits. In this video, we are going to look at timeout pattern using the Resilience 4J's time limiter in a Spring Boot application to see how we can efficiently create timeouts if there are any delays in your API and processing so that you can notify the consumer so that he can retry later. Let's get started. Imagine I have an application called Activity Service. I want to request an activity from this particular service. So I will be calling an API called slash activity. And this is connecting to an API, let's say in this case, board API, right? So board API just returns a random activity. We would have seen the same example in the Resilience 4J. I'm using the same example here. So when I call this activity API, my application is going to go to the board API and then it is going to respond my a caller with a response. I will be sending a HTTP 200 OK with the corresponding activity which I got from the board API. This is a success or a happy path scenario. Now what happens if let's say the board API is taking longer? Imagine it's taking more than two seconds. I know that the board API shouldn't be taking more than two seconds. And my SLA agreement with the caller is two seconds. And I'm going to stop my processing. So I'm going to respond back to my caller with a 408 timeout exception. So 408 is a response code in the HTTP status for timeouts. So let's see how we can implement this in the Spring Boot application using Resilience 4J. As usual, I'm in the start.spring.io. I'll be using a Maven project uh, with 3.2.5 version of Spring Boot. I want to add uh, the dependency for web because I'm exposing some endpoints. I'll call my project as time limiter example the group is going to be com tech primers i'll be using java 17 and i'm packaging it as a jar let me generate this i'll be adding the resilience 4j dependency in the pom directly let me open the project in intellij So the project is opened in IntelliJ. Let me maximize this. I have my time limiter example. Uh, there is nothing in here. There is just an application that properties. There is a POM XML, right? So I need to add my Resilience 4J dependency. So in addition to that, I am going to use Lombok as well because I'm using the board API. So I will be having some models. So I need to auto generate some classes, etc. So I'm going to use Lombok API. And I'm going to add the dependency for AOP and Resilience 4J because Resilience 4J requires AOP um, because that's how Resilience 4J intercepts the requests and things like that. So we need to add Spring Boot starter AOP and I have added the Resilience 4J dependency for the Spring Boot 2.0.2. So this has all the uh, Resilience 4J libraries embedded in it. So I'm just using that for simplicity. Now coming to the application itself, uh, we need to add the activity classes. So I'm going to create a resource uh, dot activity. So I want to create an activity class. Um, actually, I want to call this an activity resource. I'm exposing this as slash activity. And this is a rest controller. So I would require a REST template because I'm going to call the board API. So I will just call this private REST template and REST template. And let me add the constructor parameter with the REST template. I'll also inject the REST template um, in my boot up time. So let me add it as a bean to Uh, that's all I have. So I have injected the rest template and I'm using that here. 
I also need to expose some endpoint. So let me expose a get mapping. So this get mapping is going to return a get activity. Notice that Codium is uh, giving me everything. In fact, it's giving me the endpoint for the uh, REST API as well. So it knew that I'm going to use the Code API. Um, uh, so Codium is, if you don't know what is Codium, Codium is an extension. Take a look at my video on Codium, uh, which I made a few days ago. So I'm going to use this particular API to get some response and it is responding as a string, which is great. And let's see if it works. Let me start this project. I'm not doing anything here. I'm just creating a blind uh, application with slash activity. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to start this application just to see if it works. Then later we can add the timeouts. So I'm going to connect to the HTTP get it's an activity. So this should return me a random activity uh, based on the response what we get from the um, API. Looks like, okay, uninstalled unused apps in the world. Okay, so this is returning the whole JSON because I uh, gave it as a string here. So obviously Codium is not doing its job. So I'm going to return uh, an activity class. I'm going to create an activity class based on the fields what I have here. So this could be a model. I will create this as a model. I also want to use Lombok um, to give me the no axe constructor. I want the all axe constructor. And also this is a data object. And I also want to have builder. I don't know if I will use it, but uh, let me ask for it. So I'm going to add uh, the activity which we want and uh, I also would be adding type, participants, price, link, key accessibility. Codium has done a very good job in suggesting everything for me. So I'm using the same whatever we have here, right? So everything is just the same. So my Pojo is ready. I can use this directly in my resource here. Let me... Um, add a variable okay so this is going to be my activity and from the activity i'm going to get the activity and return uh, the string so i also want to log um, what activity i received let's say log.info Since I've enabled uh, Lombok, I can use the SLF4J um, to annotate and it can use the corresponding logging mechanism. So let me restart this application. So I should at least get the exact um, activity which I want or which is like random. Let's see uh, how this responds. Okay, so we got a 200 HTTP okay, and we got a activity saying start a webinar on a topic of your choice. Yeah, this itself is a video. Yeah, that's an activity. Um, so board API suggested to uh, start a webinar on your of a topic on your choice. So now our application is good. So this is the happy path which we talked about. We have a happy path. Now what happens if this particular API returns a timeout, right? Now how do we handle it? Generally what we do, we add a controller advice. Um, so generally, uh, for example, um, I generally add an API exception handler. So this API exception handler can be annotated with a controller advice. So controller advice is a annotation using which Spring Boot can uh, intercept your request when there is an exception which is happening in your application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch the um, exception, the timeout exception which our application is going to raise and I'm going to respond it with a um, 408, right? So I'm going to handle timeout exception and I can do a lot of processing here so I'm going to say um, I'm just going to print out received timeout handler and how do I uh, map that this method should be called for the timeout I can add an exception handler in the exception handler I can define different exceptions so I'm going to define so I'm going to define the timeout exception, which we are going to get here. 
In addition to it, I also wanted to respond with a 408. So there is a nice annotation which you can use uh, called as response status. So this is again a good annotation which we can use for um, returning. So let's understand what is the 408. So 408 um, is translated to request timeout. So we can use the request timeout to be returned here. Done. So this will now respond uh, if there is a timeout exception this particular controller or device now will respond with a 408 um, exception now how do i make a timeout a timeout uh, which is going to happen here so i'm going to wrap this method into a smaller method so that i can um, create a, a thread dot sleep or something and then i can use it so let me wrap this into a method called a slow method So we are going to get the activity, but however, I'm going to create some random uh, generation of text. So I'm going to use the random generator to um, randomly give me some uh, text, right? So I can say, okay, give me random next Boolean. So based on which I'm going to randomly generate uh, my uh, sleep, right? So here, what I will do is I'll add a log to say sleeping for three seconds. I'm going to sleep for three seconds and you see Codium is doing its magic. So <laughs> it's automatically suggesting me this code and I just added a tab and then it's automatically doing it, which is amazing. That's the power of Codium plugin. So feel free to use it. Uh, it's crazy. It's pretty amazing. The next thing what I'm doing here is I am calling the, uh, the rest template. Uh, if let's say the sleep um, did not go through, then I'm just returning the response back. So randomly, this particular text will be called. Otherwise, I'm just going to the board API and responding. That way, I'm simulating a, um, a slow call to the board API. I know board API is not going to fail, so I'm going to do that. What I will do is I'll just um, wrap this into a slow method. So I'm having the slow method here. I cannot directly call the slow method uh, and then make it fail. Instead, what I would do is I would wrap this into a completable future because that is how we can wrap the time limiter into a completable future. So that way we know these are asynchronous because you cannot catch it on a synchronous uh, thread, right? Because a synchronous thread is going on and how do you intercept it, right? So that's why we are going to wrap this whole slow method into a completable future and we are going to give it um, to the, uh, the limiter, the time limiter. So I'm going to create a completable future of string because I'm going to return a string. And I'll apply an async uh, method. Yeah, so this is the slow method which I'm going to give and I'm going to wrap this into a completable future because this is returning a completable future. Cool. So what I did here is I am wrapping the slow method into a completable future so that my time limiter thread can intercept the thread which is executing this API call or whatever. And even if that is getting delayed, I will have another thread to respond back, right? So that's why I'm using the completable future. So I can stop the completable future whenever I want, or maybe I can just break the existing flow and then go back to the main flow, right? So I'm doing that here. Um, in order to enable the time limiter, I am going to add a time limiter annotation. This is an annotation from the Resilience 4J. I'm going to call this as an activity. Yeah, it is suggesting. So I'll call this as an activity. I need to provide some configuration for this guy. So I'm going to go to the uh, application YAML. So I'll create maybe an application YAML, which I'm comfortable with. So I have an application YAML. So in the application YAML, I'm going to add all the configurations which I require. I'll add the application name, which is going to be activity service. I already had something here. I'll delete this particular file. Cool. And I need to have the resilience 4J um, time limiter config. So if you see here, this is automatically suggesting, right? So I want to add some default uh, configuration. I want to add some configs. 
So I want to add a default configuration of two seconds. I'm not going to add five seconds. And also I want to cancel my uh, future, which was running, right? So I want to cancel my completable future so I can control that uh, here. And I can also provide uh, different instances. So here I created an instance called activity. The instance is nothing but the uh, instance of this guy, right? I can have multiple APIs and I can give different uh, names to those APIs and I can use different configurations. But uh, here I'm just using a simple default one, right? And I'm giving uh, the activity one and I'm giving a base config as default. So it will use the same configuration what I have defined here as a base. So that's all I wanted. Um, I think I have the configurations done. I have my resources ready. Um, I have my exception handler done. I think we are ready for going to demo this. Let's see what happens. I'm hitting the same activity API. Uh, notice that I got a 200 response. Um, again, I'm getting a 200 response. Again, the APIs are responding much faster. That's why. Um, let's hope for the best uh, to see if let's say randomly. So notice here now my activity is returning a 408, right? Um, and if you see here connection got closed. So uh, I was trying for a long time and then still uh, I was getting 200. So what I did, I had a hack. Instead of doing the random generator, I just uh, created a true and then went inside. So don't use it. I mean, I, it, this is just for demo purpose. So I just did it. But um, the gist is we are getting a 408 based on the response code what we have defined here. If we define a different response code, let's say you don't want to give 408. Instead, you want to give 409, um, something like a client error, right? Or a conflict, for example, right? I can do that as well. So I can just come here, change that into conflict. Let me restart the service and you should be able to see conflict. So instead of 408, it's gonna be 409. Yeah, so see here, we got the 409. So it's up to you. Uh, ideally, if it is a timeout, based on the API specification, we should be using the 408. So I wouldn't suggest doing it, but I'm just showing you how you can change the status. Uh, this applies for any exception. It's not just for timeout. You can have different response codes uh, triggered for different um, exceptions. You can use controller advice for doing that. So this intercepts your request, handles the exception and then responds back. You don't have to manually do that or handcraft it within the API. I have seen a lot of folks doing that manually within the Spring Boot application, within the API, do a check and things like that, but instead use the controller advice to do this. Let me just summarize what we just did here. We created a Spring Boot application using the Spring Boot 3.2 version. We added the Resilience 4J library. We started using the at limiter, at time limiter, annotation to control or stop the execution if let's say there is a timeout which we incur we have defined some timeout duration we have a timeout duration of two seconds based on this we are catching the exception in the controller advice and we are translating that with a specific http response code which we want do try it out if you are using any apis where you want to do specific http request response or if you want to reduce your um, timeouts when let's say a dependent API is taking longer or maybe a database take call is taking longer. Of course, not every place you will have to return the timeout back to the caller, but do it only when you require it. The code for this particular example is available as usual in our GitHub repository. Do check it out. If you want me to make a video on any specific topic, do let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.